Hello everyone. Today on Adventures with Paul we're actually printing. I got it up and running finally. Um, let's see. Quick review. We were having a problem with that small gear and it wasn't meshing with the large gear very well. Um, went back and forth with the supplier a couple of times. They wanted me to take these washers out from behind these screws. Well, I tried that. It didn't work. In fact, it made things worse because the screw bottomed out in the motor and there's a screw bottomed out in the motor so it wasn't tightening on the plastic anyway. So the parts are made out of plastic so all I did was the oblong hole in this frame I made it a little more oblong so I could nestle it in and you can see I can't turn it right now. We got filament in and we're up to temperature so I'm not going to touch. You'll see in a minute. But it meshes nicely. It's tight. I put extra washers in. There's three washers behind each of the three screws to give a little more space and hold the plastic a little tighter. That seems to be working fairly well. Um, let's see. Other things I ran into, there was a air gap between the borsalate glass and, or borsalate, however you pronounce it, anyhow, between the glass and the heated bed there. And someone told me that the traces needed to go on the top, not the bottom. So now the, uh, the LED is actually on the bottom. I flipped it over, I resoldered it. Uh, to get the wires that I had working, I had to swap the wires to keep plus and minus straight. Swap them on the other end as well. But uh, the traces are now in direct contact with the glass. The clips, I was clipping from the red heated bed to the glass. So just, you know, very narrow grip. Now I'm going all the way top to bottom here. Uh, it's holding much nicer. Um, the white square on the outside of the glass is my 200 by 200 millimeter bed. My home position, if we can see it, is right in the corner up at the top here. So flip the glass over, um, have it in direct contact. I had to redo the screws on the end. Um, you can see that's a flat head now. I countersunk the uh, circuit card so the screw would be flush. I filed the screw down. This screw back here wound up, the, the hole wound up blowing out the corner. I had mentioned that it looked like they had hand drilled the aluminum and the holes for the aluminum plate to mount the heated bed didn't line up with the holes in the heated bed perfectly. They had oversized drilled the hole so there was a bit of slop and for that one corner there wasn't enough. But I just went with a number six screw and uh, that is sandwiching it nicely. The screw heads are all below the level of the board so the height of the board above the aluminum plate is being set by the little standoffs which I can't really get a good view of from here. There's a standoff underneath that screw in the corner. Um, this kit doesn't have a real way of leveling short of putting shims in. Uh, what I wound up doing is taking those standoffs, they're aluminum, and just grinding them down a little bit with a Dremel tool to adjust the height to get the bed as level as possible. I'm plus or minus uh, 0.1 millimeter right now, which is should be more than enough. Um, I was running into an issue with the uh, power supply. My lights are all nice and constant now. I'm going to edit right here and put a little clip in to show what it used to look like. Uh, just editing a little bit in here to show the problem I was having before I put the power supply in, the extra one. Um, as you can see here, we are up to temperature on the extruder and we're getting there on the bed. The bed light is on nice and solid. The extruder doesn't have a uh, LED on it. It's got this one over here that flickers. It's on whenever the extruder heat is on. So that's at temperature and it's pulsing now to maintain temperature. And you can see, maybe not on this, there's a little flicker in all the lights. That tells me that the power supply is not regulating. Now we're getting up to bed temperature here. And when we get to bed temperature, 
the uh, blue light down there will start flickering as well. And that's 1 ohm worth of resistance, 1.2. So that's drawing like 10 amps down there. So when it starts pulsing, the uh, flickering light issue gets much worse. So here we go. We should be getting right to temperature now. There it is. You can see the blue light down there starts flickering. Now, I don't know if you can tell on this. I can see that it's flickering on that. Maybe the uh, intensity down here. That's shaded from the blue LED. That's a direct reflection from the illumination. That tells me that the 12 volts is fluctuating quite a bit. So I have a second 12 volt supply, which is actually much better than the uh, one they provided me with. Uh, it has remote sensing. I'm going to have I figured out from the wiring how to get the bed and the extruder heater um, on this power supply and everything else on the other one. So we'll see how that does. Okay, and we're back. The solution was to add a second power supply back there. Right now the heated bed and the heated extruder, the extruder heater rather, are both running through the original power supply. Um, the rest of the ramps board, all the motors, uh, the fans, and the lights are running through the second power supply that I added. This is a 12 volt, 100 watt coastal supply. It's a nice regulated supply. It's more expensive than the uh, larger one you see there. Um, I do automotive testing, so I got supplies all over the place. I had one I was going to use, which is a 300 watt. 12 volt supply that regulates really nice. Um, it's a $500 power supply, which is half the value of this whole printer. Um, it's a little bulky and I'd have to come up with a way of mounting it. Um, I just zip tied the little supply on there and it's working just fine. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much it for right now. Um, I'm going to start a print running here, which is relatively easy to do. You load your G-code into the uh, SD card and it says card inserted right there. I hit the button and go down to card menu and I'm going to do a 20 millimeter box. This is to do uh, infill testing. Uh, it's saying we need to, the temperature on the bed is 115 for the uh, first layer. Um, I've done a couple of prints already here they are. These were done to test the wall thickness. Um, my first one, it was supposed to be 0.42 millimeter. This one wound up being about 0.52. So I made an adjustment and then redid it. And uh, my wall thickness is almost exactly what it's supposed to be. So this ne next test is to check the infill on a cube. Um, we're getting there on the bed. It takes a while for the bed to actually heat up. Um, let's see. I'll let that get started and I'll get back and I'll show you how well the uh, gears are performing the uh, lack of lash that we have now. So, see in a sec. And we're back for another go. Um, ran into an interesting problem in that the Z adjust on our uh, printer here was so low that it literally tore a hole in the middle of the uh, PET film. So, let's see, 239 heating, we should be up to temperature. We are printing a small um, 20 centimeter, no, 2 centimeter by 2 centimeter by 1 centimeter box. And it skirts it twice. I know we are extruding. I'm not seeing anything move there, but or come out rather. Ah, now we're going. It goes around in a circle twice just to get the filament flowing properly. Um, we have 
offset by 0.3 to start with vertically. Um, I was literally dragging right on the uh, surface to start with. Oh, that's looking much better. All right. I'll be back when this one's done. And we're back. We're um, showing 97% done that uh, SD in the next to the bottom row is how far we're done. And it's doing the infill on the top layers right now. Um, it was doing an interesting honeycomb pattern in the middle. Um, once this is complete, um, I'm going to be taking measurements on it to see how close we are to uh, accurate. I added some uh, G-code to the end of the file. There's a provision to add some initial G-code and some final G-code. The in initial G-code was stuff put in to turn the fans on. The final does a home back to the origin and then does a Z plus up to plus 100 I think. Yeah, we're going to Z100 and then we're going to go to Y200. So it gets the head out of the way, which is fairly close to our maximum height there, and then kicks it out. So there's our second solid object, and the top is actually looking pretty good. I'm going to let this cool off. Um, the, another G-code command turned the bed off. The, heat, the extruder was being turned off automatically, but the bed was uh, being left on. So I put in a command to shut that off as well. So 14 minutes to print a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter by 10... Yeah, 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter by 10 millimeter solid block with 40% infill. So, there we have it. Um, I got something complex to do next. I have an actual part, uh, the VESA mount for our Revo computers, which is a fairly large piece. I think I'm getting pretty close on calibration here, so we'll be trying that next. Catch you all later, folks.